Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and the 6.5 is live in the Cisco booth at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And you can hear in the background, hopefully, all the action of this show. And this year is a big year. I mean, Dan, doesn't 2023 seem like a bigger year than 2022? It just feels like we're back to normal. And yeah, hopefully they can hear some of the background and get that energy <laughs> that's going on here. But at the same time, We've got a great uh, in the booth show today. We're going to be talking to a repeat guest. Yes, coming back, six we'll five veteran, a veteran and alumnus of the six five. We're going to be talking a little bit about what's going on at Cisco. Absolutely, uh, Mossum. Thanks for coming on the show again today. Great to see you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was great uh, catching up uh, in the green room. I guess you could yeah. call it. Uh, talking about our busy schedules, but I think busy is good, and particularly in this time. Uh, customers are looking for, you know, value, key value propositions, how they can help their customers, uh, driving revenue. So maybe we can just start off the top. I mean, what did you announce here at Mobile World Congress? There's a lot to unpack, but I'll just, uh, you know, talk a little bit about what we really announced, how we are going to help our customers find net new revenue. There we go. And most, most importantly, yeah. how do we help uh, our customers to do it in a sustainable way uh, and how do we simplify the experience of the end user aka your consumer experience the right. business users experience we want to make it seamless regardless of whatever technology they want to use yeah that's great it's really good that Mossum brought up revenue because in this year and you and i've talked so much about kind of a year of austerity a year of more pragmatic thinking in business right. We had a couple of really booming years and the pandemic brought a lot of challenges, Pat, but it actually also brought a ton of growth into tech, tons of investment in digital transformation. And now that the economy's a little bit more you know, shaky, we're kind of seeing companies coming back and saying, we need to think more about how is all this investment driving return? So Mossum, I'm really glad that you're, you're you know, that that's what you're hearing. Um, talk a little bit about you know, the industrial transformation and how it's being powered by mass scale infrastructure. So why don't we first start with, you know, we have gone through a massive transformation in our IT on digitization as well as cloud adoption. But now if we also look forward, where is the next big wave is, is, is really on the physical space. So every business, they think about the front line of the businesses, those physical stages are still not fully digitized. Yeah. That creates the next opportunity for every business to think differently adopt technology, and we believe both Wi-Fi 6 and 5G is going to play a critical role to digitize the physical world. And we believe on this digitization of the physical world is going to play a critical role on accelerating growth and drive more sustainability across many industries. Most probably we'll see some of it is starting to happen in uh, energy market, in transportation market, but it is an opportunity in every market of a time. And you're really talking IoT too, and you're, you're, you're leaning into that here. Absolutely. Yeah. And because when you think about the physical space, it's you have to bring space, things, and people together. So we cannot think IoT in isolation, but think about people and IoT in one sentence. Yeah, I like the way strategically how you put people and the IoT together. I mean, when you step back, uh, they're all connected, right? And they don't necessarily need to be connected uh, uniquely and differently. There are some uh, ways you can do that that I think is, is, is very efficient and very smart. What I'm really excited about the industrial IoT today is that uh, it's becoming more of a reality, mm -hmm. right? Uh, instead of every one of these being a bespoke rollout, uh, there are some customer stories mm -hmm. that other companies, and you know, companies typically don't want to be first whether that's you know, smart transportation, smart logistics, uh, smart factory, uh, smart anything right now, uh, we, we have a, a better track record for that. So uh, Cisco brings uh, a certain value add to the table, but you also work uh, with CSPs, particularly uh, around wireless. And, and I'm curious, what is your model of, of working with, uh, with the CSPs? So number one, I have to say that uh, these problem areas are very vast and we cannot do it alone. We have to yeah. work with uh, ecosystems of partner. Let's very, be very specific about CSPs. In this physical space digitization, we know uh, cellular and mobile technology is going to play a critical role. Uh, and all our CSPs have many years of experience 
deploying cellular technology, mobile technology, right. and building very large distributed networks. So definitely we see tremendous amount of value bringing that experience and expertise, oftentimes bringing spectrum that is needed to solve this connectivity problem. Uh, they definitely play a big role and we will be playing hand in hand with these CSPs as we go and digitize the physical world. Yeah. Now you said something as you started talking about the CSPs and you talked about your ecosystem, you talked about your partner, you your partners, you talked about, you know, you can't go at it alone. Can you talk a little bit about you know, that whole partner ecosystem and some, you know, maybe some of the key partners that are really helping you drive this next wave. Absolutely, CSPs are going to be a key partner here, but also as you go into these industries, the industry experience and expertise, uh, not only the tech, but also business processes is super right. important. So many of our system integration partners, uh, we have already announced few of them who are becoming our partner uh, who has the industry expertise, they have deep domain knowledge. Also, they come with this practice of taking complex technology and taking all the complexity away through managed services. So NTT, we announced our partnership right. with NTT, will provide a managed service uh, using our private 5G solution in many countries. I think they're starting with 40, 47 different countries. Uh, Entity is one we announced Logicalis last year. This is one type of partnership. The other side of the partnership, we have to work with a very wide set of radio ecosystem. We recently announced um, addition of NEC partnership on the radio side. We right. continue to expand that. But we also have to think about device ecosystem, what happens on the edge as you think about the physical space. We also announced another partnership with Intel to power the edge processing with Intel technology and Xeon processors on the edge of the infrastructure. Oh, I love that, it's classic Cisco. I mean, Cisco has been a partner first uh, company since its existence, and it's great to see that continue. So I'm awesome, one of the, one of the mistakes uh, some press and analysts make is they look at this IoT world as a horizontal, but the reality is it's a lot of different verticals. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, could you share with some of uh, our viewers, what are some of the, uh, vertical areas of heat and light mm -hmm. that, that seem robust uh, and exciting right now? So uh, one vertical that we feel very excited about is transportation. Okay. And in transportation, let's take one part of the transportation with the vehicles and the cars. So it's electrification of the vehicle, the connected vehicle to improve driver safety, to improve reliability, to drive a sustainable outcome is getting digitized super fast. Right. So if we just think about transportation and starting with the digitization of the cars and the experience of the car user and the fleet managers is moving really fast. We are super excited about it. We're also seeing similar uh, movement happening in digitization of your energy grids. Not only production, but also distribution. And many, many of the customers are actually working with us on accelerating that digitization journey. The third is uh, we see that there is a lot of uh, discussion around digitizing or manufacturing. So a lot of new fabrication labs that is being built are going to be built with modern thinking on full digitization of manufacturing processes. So these are the three verticals that we believe are going to be the first movers. And we are so glad to work with our partners and ecosystem to help our customers to make that big difference and take a leap. Yeah, it's really interesting because, well, first of all, the manufacturing, you're bringing it to life, but you're also, you know, we hear a lot about things like in, in metaverse and stuff, but these are the actual real applications where you're going to see like digital twin uh, become real examples of what this whole metaverse narrative has is, is kind of been, you know, it's not about you know, your social media. That's just yeah. not what it's really going to be. I also love that you talked about the automotive space because- Oh, I love, and I love it, the examples too, that they're, they're such hard uh, areas, right? Because you have diverse needs all the way from high performance, low latency mm -hmm. uh, to something you might want to ping once a week or something. And uh, the diversity of communications across those are, are huge challenges. And, you know, it, it's technically cool to see the areas of, of what Cisco's in across that span, uh, you addressing those needs. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking how many of our vendors that we've worked with for years 
that have one, started this whole verticalization process and really leaned into that, but also gone into automotive though. When right. you say that, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. we suddenly became uh, automotive analysts over the last few years as we've seen software defined vehicles mm -hmm. and network vehicles. That's right. So it's been really interesting. Masam, we've only got a, a, a minute or two left. So love to give you the floor. Is there anything else, you know, with the 6.5 audience that you'd love to share about what's going on here at MWC or just in general over the business you're leading? So uh, we are definitely, it's, it's great to be here in person with so many of our customers and partners. It's great to see that our customer priorities are still strong on continuous investment in technology. Right. But we are also seeing a lot of this pragmatic conversation, not just tech for tech. Tech to solve real world problem, uh, to help us become a lot more sustainable in, in every industry. Also, accelerating digitization to improve productivity in the market. Yeah. Uh, improving safety. So it's great to be here and having all this conversation. One piece, the last piece I might want to talk about, we talk about IoT, we talk about different type of complex technology and 5G. We don't talk enough about complexity that brings to IT and OT operations. Yeah. If there is one piece that we wanted to talk about, you either to look horizontally or vertically, it is our obligation to design out complexity. If we want to drive adoption of this technology, we have to design out complexity. We have to make everything simpler, both for consumer as well as enterprises to move faster. Yeah, those are sage words, Mossam, and I'm glad you brought up IT versus OT. Uh, it, it's, from an analyst point of view, sometimes I think, oh, we've been talking about that for tw 12 years. In fact, we, we wrote an initial white paper uh, segment, segmenting the yeah. IoT 12 years ago. We talked about IT and OT systems. I think the good news is, is, is the vernacular. I think IT is getting a lot more respect for OT and OT is getting a lot more respect for IT. Mm -hmm. And they're seeing the true value to help their own companies is when the two of them to come together but also I see what Cisco is doing to simplify that process and get people talking on the same page. So, Masam, thank you so much for coming on the show. A 6.5 veteran, uh, we'd love to do an update with you at the next big show to see how things are going. Thank you. All right, thanks, Masam. And everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the 6.5. It's in the booth at the Cisco uh, booth <laughs> at MWC 2023 here in Barcelona. For Patrick Moorhead and myself, we appreciate you tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Check out all the content that we created here. And of course, our regular Friday show, our summit and everything else we do on the 6.5. But for now, for Pat, for myself, we got to go. Bye now. <laughs>